Canon EOS R1, what specs would it have? Hello everybody, welcome to the video. Hopefully you're all having amazing creative days and I don't want to waste any time here. Let's jump right into it. Today we're going to speculate on what the EOS R1 Canon flagship camera could be, what it's all about. Some rumors came out recently and you know, they're kind of teasing a few things, but personally, I don't think we're going to get any more significant rumors until the Sony a7R5 is announced. I think Canon being who Canon is, they're going to wait for Sony to play their cards first and then they're going to throw their cards on the table. There's no sense in them unveiling what they're about to do before the a7r5 comes out or is, is is announced so with that being said let's start off with megapixels <laughs> everyone's favorite typo so here we go megapixels i feel like the megapixels for this are going to fall between 60 and 80 megapixels and again it all depends on what canon feels sony is going to release if so if, if canon feels sony is going to release a 70 megapixel camera then i think canon is going to release a 75 megapixel camera if, you know and so on and so forth i think if if they feel like sony is going to release an 80 megapixel cameras canon might jump out and release a 90 megapixel camera i think there's an outside chance that that happens i doubt it but in an ideal world i think canon would like to release a 65 megapixel camera and then with the r1 mark ii a 70 megapixel camera and then with the r3 mark or r1 mark iii a 75 megapixel camera because unfortunately a lot of businesses have the tech to create better quality stuff but they just want to release tech incrementally to try and like maximize the the profitability of that tech so that's i think where we stand now i have some concerns about this huge megapixel camera okay so my first concern i'll illustrate with aps-c size sensors i've shot with different cameras with aps-c size sensors different resolutions and the thing is no matter how big the resolution on the APS-C size sensor is, it just seems like the details don't improve. They still look muddy in certain areas compared to full frame. So if we translate what I learned shooting APS-C to full frame, it makes me wonder if you pack on more megapixels or more pixels onto the sensor, you're still shooting with that same 35 millimeter size sensor. Like the, the surface area is still the same. You're just putting more megapixels on it. Are we really gonna see a huge jump in detail? That's my concern, I, I don't know. And the other side of the coin is this, is if we have this massive resolution, what lenses does Canon have that could actually capture that kind of resolution? We have the 28 to 70 f2, uh, 85 f1.2, 50 1.2. I think those are the three lenses that can capture that kind of resolution. I'm not sure about the 15 to 35 or 24 to 70, 24 to 105, definitely I don't think we'll cut it. So the question is like, is Canon gonna come out with some ultra L lenses for the R1 if it does have such a high resolution and picks up so much detail? And the other thing too is like, you gotta ask yourself, if you really need that kind of detail and that kind of resolution, why not just buy medium format at that point? You know, just if you need the resolution, go to the resolution king and buy medium format because I think like no matter how many pixels you, you, you pack onto that 35 millimeter sensor, it's just not going to come close to the amount of detail you can pick up with full frame. The bigger the surface area, the more light it picks up, the greater the detail. I think that's just some kind of law of physics. And yeah, that's my thought on um, the mega pickles. Okay, next up we have the autofocus. Now, uh, Canon and Sony are kind of class leading when it comes to autofocus. They're both fantastic. I don't, I can't really think of any way that Canon can improve the autofocus for the R1. Maybe they might try something gimmicky like ball autofocus. So if you're shooting sports, the camera will track the ball. I don't know, maybe, or hubcap autofocus. Maybe something like that. I, I hope that the R1 gets the technology from the R3 where you can move around the focus point with your eye. I think that's pretty cool. So if you really need to move around, boom, 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 and focus in different places, I think that's super handy. Obviously there's a learning curve with that, but I think that's pretty cool. And maybe we'll hear the term quad pixel autofocus pop up again. I remember that term kind of floating around a little while ago and maybe that's gonna be the thing, that's gonna be the marketing strategy or the, the lingo that they use, quad pixel autofocus, EOS R1, best autofocus ever, blah, blah, blah. So who knows, maybe that's, that's something, but uh, those are my thoughts on the autofocus. Okay, let's talk about low light performance and dynamic range. Obviously, the R1 is going to have the best dynamic range seen in any Canon camera. That's that's a given. Um, low light performance is the question here. Now, if we look at the Sony a7 III, it's a 12 megapixel sensor, and that camera is a low light beast. 
bigger, bigger pixels collecting a lot more light on the same surface area and it works really well. So in this situation, we're looking at the opposite formula. We're looking at a lot more pixels per square inch on that full frame sensor if we're going to like 75 or 80 megapixels. So will it be good in low light? Will it be able to handle low light? What are our expectations? Personally, I don't know. If, uh, if you have some opinions, let me know in the comments down below. But I think with the R1, we will see a dual gain ISO like we have seen on some of the Sony cameras. So maybe like at ISO 100, it's gonna be super clean. And then again, at ISO 3200, it's gonna be super clean again. And I, I can kind of see that tech popping into the, uh, the R1 since it's a flagship camera and that would be pretty cool. All right, so now let's touch on some of the video features. And I think Canon kind of learned their lesson and they understand now that the consumers want quality video features as well as quality photo features in the cameras. And I don't see the R1 being a cinema camera like the R5C where you have cinema mode and photo mode. At least I hope it doesn't have that because, I mean, as a hybrid shooter, I want to switch between photo and video fast, especially if you're shooting a wedding, you know, you take your shots and then you want to switch to video to get some video for the client and you're waiting 10 seconds for that camera to go into video mode. And by then the, the shot is gone, it's over. So that's the one downside to the R5C. If you like switching back and forth fast, it's not gonna happen. And of course, battery life is terrible. But um, with the R1, I think it's going to be a really, really good hybrid camera. Whether it has the, the cinema mode in, in the menu system or not, I don't know. If they do, hopefully it, it switches over a lot faster or if they just bring some of those cinema features into the regular photography mode, that would be really good. Like if we get scopes or false colors or something like that in regular photography mode, so we can just shoot video and photo at the same time with some professional tools, that would be good. I, I, I don't know if Canon is gonna give us that because they really want to sell their cinema cameras. And if uh, the batteries die on your lights, then uh, you just have to keep filming. But yeah, they want to sell their cinema cameras, so I don't know if they're going to put those features in the R1. But then again, the R1 is going to be really expensive, so hopefully hopefully it's in there. Um, number two, I think that, oh, obviously we're going to get like C-Log 1, 2, and 3 in the R1. And maybe there's an outside chance that, that Canon really wants to push the envelope and we might get something crazy like, let's say, 8K 120 RAW or 4K... 240p, I mean, that would be pretty cool, like super slow-mo in 4K, that would be awesome. That would be a huge selling feature for a lot of people. I think that would interest the video people. The photo guys, you know, or girls, photo people, they'd be like, eh, nah, that's just a gimmick, I don't care. But uh, yeah, so I think that's definitely an option there. When it comes to the, four, the, the 8K resolution, I think this camera is really gonna be focused on 8K, but I don't think, the market is ready for 8K yet, but I think since this is a flagship camera, and obviously flagship cameras come out every five, six, seven years, you know, it's not like every year there's a new flagship. So I think this camera has to be a little bit future-proof, and Canon is obviously conscious of that. So the video features that are in this camera are definitely going to be future-proof, at least for the next four years. So they're gonna really, I think they're really going to push the, the, the 8K stuff, and we might even see something crazy like 9.6K oversampled 8K or even 12K oversampled uh, I mean, yeah, 12K oversampled, 8K, and that would be crazy, right? And 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 the processing power on the camera would be insane. I mean, you'd probably chew through batteries pretty fast. I think the R1 is definitely going to have a bigger battery, but we'll talk about the batteries in a second. But yeah, I think if you look at the, the history of Canon, you look at the R5, for example, Canon marketed 8K, 8K, 8K. This camera is a, a video beast. It's, it's Videographers are going to love it. It has 8K. And then when the R5 came out, it like get overheated and in five minutes and 8K was just limited to like, what, five minutes of use and 4K 120 overheated, it was pretty much unusable. I mean, now with firmware updates, it's gotten a lot better, but Canon might do the same thing with the R1 where they advertise it as, we can shoot 12K or 9.6K oversampled 8K and blah, 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 blah. And then when the camera comes out, it's like, yeah, you could do it, but you know, the camera can only go for five minutes. So I don't know, we'll see. Canon has been kind of sneaky with their advertising and marketing and I personally don't like that as a Canon user. I would prefer that they were just honest and straightforward. I mean, they never lied. They just don't tell you the whole truth. And that's a bit of a concern to me. Now, one thing I think that, that is going to happen with the R1 is dual CF Express card slots. There's a lot of data coming out of that camera. And since it's a professional level camera, you also need backup. So you can't like on the R5, when you're recording high-end video, 
it sends the high-end video to the CF Express card and then sends like a lower-end version of that video to the SD card. And I don't think that is a good solution. I think with the R1, we're going to have the dual CF Express card slots and that's going to be great. Plus, I mean, if we're pumping out, let's say, 75 megapixel photos and 8K RAW, maybe 8K 120, who knows? I mean, if, if it does, then we're going to need some really fast cards. And maybe even there's going to be some kind of like internal RAM so the camera can record everything to the internal RAM memory on the camera and then offload it to the cards a little bit later. Who knows? But the other thing, too, is if you look at modern cameras, like my, my I was shocked when I looked when I opened up a camera because, I mean, my perception of cameras is you open it up, you have your film, you have your gears, you have your shutter, all these electronic parts. And, you know, it's all mechanical. But nowadays, if you open up a camera, it's basically a computer. I mean, it's all circuit boards and microchips and solder joints and all that stuff. So that being said, like computers produce heat and heat needs to be dissipated. And if you're shooting uh, really fast, high speed, and the R1 is going to be a sports shooter as well as high, meg high megapixel shooter. So um, it's going to be processing a lot of raw files and sending them off to the cards. And 8K video obviously takes a lot of processing power, especially if it's something crazy like 9.6K or 12K oversampled 8K. There's going to be a lot of processing happening in the camera, and that's going to produce a lot of heat. So the one thing I've learned with my experience with CF Express cards is that they produce a lot of heat. They're like, when you pull it out of the camera and you're recording 8K, they're like 40, 50 degrees. So they're pretty hot. So maybe those CF Express cards are going to be moved. Like I would hope that Canon re-engineers the internals of the camera. So maybe the CF Express card slots will pop in on the bottom where the battery is and that whole compartment will be thermally sealed off from the rest of the camera. So all the heat produced by the battery and the CF Express cards will maybe just vent out the side or just heat up that one portion of the camera where everything else like the circuit boards and processors will stay cool. Maybe, you know, we could see something like that. Hopefully Canon is innovative with the way they design the internals of the camera. I know it might be a bit of a pain in the butt to put your CF Express card in the, the battery slot door because we're not used to it, but in terms of like thermals, it might be the best choice. Now, in terms of like the body design, and again, let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with anything I say, you know, give me your input. It would be cool to kind of like leave your thoughts down below. And then when the R1 finally comes out, we can come back and take a look at this video and we can see like who left a comment, who was right, who was wrong, you know, like what, what came to fruition, what it can and pass on. So yeah, that'd be kind of cool. So like in terms of the body size and shape, I think it's going to look probably like the R3 with that strange rubber grip and it's going to be like a 1D series, like big bulky camera. And for me personally, I think that's unfortunate. I really like the way Sony went with their with their flagship camera where it was just like a regular size camera and then you could add a battery grip if you wanted. And I was thinking about it the other day and I came up with an interesting idea and let me know what you think. If the R1 was like the size of an R, like just a regular camera, and it took like a BP511A battery. So if you want to go light and portable, you just pop in the, the regular battery and you go around, you do your shooting and stuff. But if you want to take it into like you know sports mode or super video mode, then you can add an optional battery grip. But the thing that, with the battery grip is there's going to be two battery grips. They're both going to take those big batteries that the R3 takes. But one battery grip is going to have the joystick and the buttons on it, and it's specifically for photographers. So the photographer purists can get their joystick and their buttons, and they're, they're shooting sports vertically, and everything's cool, and they're happy. And then there'll be another battery grip specifically for video shooters. And instead of a buttons and a joystick, it'll have a full-size HDMI port, it'll have XLR or mini XLR inputs, and maybe a D-tap input so you can attach it to a battery. It's like, that would be pretty cool, right? So rather than having everything on the camera, you can just mod it by adding your photo battery grip or your video battery grip. And now you have the extra functionality, which is specific for videographers. And then you have extra functionality for photographers. So what do you think of that? And, and then again, also you can take off the battery grip and you have a smaller, more portable camera that you can take with you if you wanna go hiking or on a trip or something. And you just want something a little more incognito. I mean, if you're traveling somewhere, you don't want a big camera. You don't wanna walk around like, hey, I'm a professional photographer. Look at the size of my camera, right? You'd rather have something a little more, you know, small, compact, which would be great. So yeah, those are my thoughts. I don't think Canon will do that, but in my imagination, I think that would be a fantastic idea. So let me know what you think about that down below. And uh, yeah, hopefully this video isn't too long and I wasn't too rambly. 
Uh, there was one more point I wanted to cover. What was that? Yeah, and you for I forgot something. Okay, so the other thing I would like to see in the R1 is like, okay, let's say it's it's 75 megapixels, right? I would like to see uh, a 30 or 40 megapixel option as well. So something in the menu systems where you can change it from, you know, full resolution to half resolution, because I, I don't think you want to shoot that super high resolution all the time. So it'd be kind of cool if you can get like, a 40 megapixel shot because I'm shooting with the R5 these days and I think 45 megapixels is more than enough. It's beautiful, it's crispy, it's clean, it's detailed, it's I love it. The R5 is fantastic. And I also shoot with the R with the EOS R 30.3 megapixels and I think for full frame 30.3 megapixels is the sweet spot. Like 30 megapixels is good. That's perfect. I can't imagine people really needing anything much more than that. But then again, like if you shoot commercial you know, obviously you need more detail. All right, so uh, yeah, with that being said, this video is over. I'm gonna go charge up my light. I don't know how it died on me there. But uh, yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out, thanks for watching. Have a good one.